Welcome to MTG Burgeoning, your channel for all things magic. In this video, we're going to discuss a way to build the core of a commander deck around Merkel, Lord of Bones, as its general. <laughs> Thank you for choosing MTG Burgeoning for your Magic the Gathering content. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoy this video and consider becoming a subscriber. Doing so supports the channel and makes you eligible for our various subscriber rewards series. If you would like to support the channel further, then click the link to our Patreon page in the description below. There you can join our ongoing Pack Wars series as a one month supporter or ongoing member. Or, try joining Pack Wars for free by commenting on every MTG burgeoning video in a month. We strive to offer creative rewards through our various Patreon tiers. So if Pack Wars isn't for you, then something else will be. Links to our content and various subscriber rewards series can be found in the description below. Send us an email, follow us on Twitter, follow us on Instagram. We are your channel for all things magic. Merkel, Lord of Bones, is a 7-5 legendary god. As long as our starting life total is less than or equal to half our starting life total, Merkel has indestructible. Whenever another non-token creature we control dies, we may exile it. If we do, then we create a token that's a copy of that card, except it's an enchantment and loses all other card types, meaning it is no longer a creature. Let's start by compiling a core of Enchantments Matter cards that optimize Merkel's enchantment token creating ability. Citessen Champion draws us a card whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under our control, and Eidolon of Blossoms does the same whenever it or another enchantment ETBs on our side of the battlefield. A Johnny's Chosen creates 2-2 two -two white cat creature tokens, and Archon of Sun's Grace creates 2-2 two -two white pegasus creature tokens with flying whenever any enchantments enter our side of the battlefield. As a bonus, the Archon gives these pegasus tokens lifelink. Sanctum Weaver can tap for oodles of mana depending on the number of enchantments we control. Hallowed Hound Haunting gives creatures we control flying and vigilance if we control at least seven enchantments. This enchantment also creates white spirit creature tokens whose power and toughness are equal to the number of spirits we control whenever we cast an enchantment spell. Sterling Grove gives other enchantments we control Shroud and can tutor an enchantment card to the top of our library by paying one and sacrificing it. Greater Oromancy also gives other enchantments we control Shroud. Pairing together Sterling Grove and Greater Oromancy forges a scenario in which spot removing our enchantments is impossible for our opponents. Speaking of making things inordinately difficult for our opponents, Sphere of Safety should do the same. Creatures can't attack us unless their controller pays X for each attacking creature, where X is equal to the number of enchantments we control. Grim Guardian drains each opponent for one life whenever it or another enchantment comes into play under our control. With a robust number of enchantments, Destiny Spinner can be considered a win condition, as we can send mammoth-sized elemental lands with Trample and Haste into combat. Now let's add some Tokens Matter cards to the core of this deck. We can create double the tokens with Parallel Lives or its white equivalent, Anointed Procession. For additional redundancy and for the prospect of implementing a counter package, add Doubling Season. A trickier proposition is Primal Vigor, which acts as a global doubling season, providing each player with the option of doubling their tokens and counters. Second Harvest doubles the number of tokens we control at instant speed. Jahira, Friend of the Forest, gives tokens we control the ability to tap for a green mana. Each time a token is created, create a 1-1 green squirrel creature token with Chatterfang, Squirrel General. Creating an army of squirrel tokens is a potential win condition in this type of build. Let's consider creatures with valuable enter-the-battlefield triggers for the purposes of optimizing Merkel's ability. 
Wood Elves ramps us by putting a forest card from our library onto the battlefield. Farhaven Elf does the same thing by putting a basic land into play. Reclamation Sage destroys target artifact or enchantment when it ETBs, and Acidic Slime does the same in addition to providing the option of destroying target land instead. Speaking of removal, Ravenous Chupacabra destroys target creature and opponent controls. For the purposes of dancing around protection and or indestructible, consider Fleshbag Marauder, or its Fate Reforge counterpart, Merciless Executioner. In Upping the Ante, Demon's Disciple forces each a player to sacrifice a creature or a planeswalker when it enters the battlefield. Plague Crafter takes it a step further by forcing each player to discard a card if they can't sacrifice a creature or planeswalker after it ETBs. Eternal Witness returns a card from our graveyard to our hand. Uvenwald Hydra puts any land from our library into play and under our control, which, perhaps, could be a copy of Sarah's Sanctum. As for tutoring effects, Runescarred Demon puts any card from our library into our hand a la Demonic Tutor, and Sidisi Undead Vizier could exploit herself, if needed, for the same tutoring effect. Hornet Queen creates four 1-1 green insect creature tokens with flying and death touch, Grave Titan creates two 2-2 two, two black zombie creature tokens when it comes into play and whenever it attacks. For instant army creation, add Avenger of Zendikar. Its landfall trigger synergizes with the aforementioned counter package provided by Doubling Season's inclusion. Panharmonicon will trigger each of these abilities an additional time. In order to trigger Merkel's ability, our creatures must die. The easiest way to accomplish this feat is to add sacrifice abilities to this core of cards. We can sacrifice a creature to carry on feeder and put a plus one plus one counter on it. This Seer allows us to sacrifice a creature to scry one. Woe Strider does the same for thrice the mana, but creates a sacrificial zero one goat creature token when it ETBs and can escape from the graveyard. With greater good, we can sacrifice a creature to draw cards equal to that creature's power, and then discard three cards. It costs a green mana to activate, but Evolutionary Leap lets us sacrifice a creature. We then reveal cards from the top of our library until we reveal a creature card, and then we put that creature card into our hand. Spawning Pit provides another free sacrifice outlet, with the added bonus of creating 2-2 two -two colorless spawn artifact creature tokens. We can sacrifice creatures to Altar of Dementia for targeted mill, perhaps targeting ourselves if we have a copy of Eerie Ultimatum in hand. Ashnod's Altar provides 2 generic mana if we sacrifice a creature to it, while Phyrexian Altar gives us 1 mana of any color instead. Since Merkel's ability triggers when our creatures die, let's benefit from it further by adding some cards with valuable death triggers. While not morphed, Grim Harispex draws us a card whenever another non-token creature we control dies. Midnight Reaper provides the same effect, but costs us one life each time he triggers. The loss of life from Midnight Reaper can be offset by including Molder Vine Reclamation, with the added benefit of drawing a card whenever any creature we control dies, and not just non-token creatures. Pitiless Plunderer creates treasure tokens whenever another creature we control dies. We can stockpile charge counters on Black Market, and then reap the benefits of oodles of black mana at the beginning of our pre-combat main phase. We can control the battlefield with Grave Pact and force our opponents to sacrifice creatures. This sacrifice effect skirts around protection, shroud, hexproof, and indestructible. The underloved Requiem Angel creates a 1-1 white spirit creature token with flying whenever a non-spirit creature we control dies. Whenever a non-token creature we control dies, Abzan Ascendancy creates 1-1 white spirit creature tokens with flying. Tesa Karloff maximizes our death triggers by triggering them a second time, and she adds the peripheral benefit of giving our creature tokens Vigilance and Lifelink. 
Let's complete the core of this build by optimizing and enhancing the deck's theme. Sir Conrad the Grim provides a win condition in a build that wants creatures dying. With previously mentioned ways to generate a ton of mana in mind, Torment of Hailfire acts as another win condition. Another win condition in our colors, and one that is much superior to Exsanguinate, is the seldom used and often forgotten Debt to the Deathless. Once this Dragon's Maze Uncommon reaches a value of X greater than 4, it outpaces Exsanguinate, draining more life from our opponents, which means we gain more life as well. Depending on creature options, Birthing Pod is a card to which the core of this deck could easily adapt. Although it may seem tempting to do so, do not make the mistake of adding Starfield of Nyx to this build. Remember, tokens have mana values of zero, and if Starfield of Nyx turns Merkel's enchantment tokens into creatures with powers and toughnesses equal to their converted mana costs, they will all die. Although this is an outside-the-box way to accumulate death triggers, better options are available, like the Meat Hook Massacre. Keep this in mind, it's always easier for opponents to deal with creatures than it is to deal with enchantments. This video provided a blueprint for building the core of a commander deck around Merkel, Lord of Bones, as its general. Removal spells, ramp, and the land base can vary from build to build, and also are dependent on metagame preferences and availability. The cards discussed during this video are suggested options for taking advantage of Merkel's enchantment token creating ability, in addition to providing ways to optimize this theme. Let me know your thoughts about these recommendations in the comments section below. This is MTG Burgeoning. Your channel for all things magic.